Then click it again. Yeah, click out. It's going to be open. Click out. No, 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 click out. It'll be yeah, out. Seven and then it'll be open. Oh, we're good. No, no, no. 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 Yeah, it's going through the computer. Oh, it's now, now we're going to rechange it. This is all. Yeah, go ahead and go to stereo. Uh, There we go. Yep. Yeah. So, it's good. Good. Okay. Yeah. so it looks like all we had to do is just mute it and then unmute it because this is going to be the big indicator that everything is working well. Atro, you god king. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you and the family's good. Thanks for stopping by and for pointing that out. Oh, she gets an extra three. Oh, you, you get Madonna the board? Right, right. To give a quick uh, recap, um, is everyone's checking on Vidania right now because where we last left off. I'm um, chilling. I'm looking to see. Yeah, you're chilling. Wait, I don't add anything, right? What? Can I, I roll a investigation I check? Orders. What would you like to look for? It just says um, any leftover remnants of that man. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. So what did that's you do? That's a good thing to look did for. Go ahead and roll. Did she? What did she? Did she do anything since Katrae's healed her now? Is she more cognitive? Not more cognitive. Tonight. She's just physically, you know, she just looks better. Like I said, it, it, better. there's still blood trickling down the back of her head. Can I bandage uh, her head? From where? Yeah, you can make it manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, didn't I get also gave her that three health too. Yeah. I got a seven. Seven? <laughs> Bruh. If you this is <laughs> yeah, yeah. incredibly I need so much help. I need so much help. As far as you can tell, can and, I? and I mean, the, the fire... Explosion in the room. Hang on, I got you. I got you. I got you. Either got you. erased any evidence, or there wasn't any, or, you know, or it removed any hiding spots. Hey, can I can I help Omar by by no. by pulling Vidanya's body off the wall just a bit so that it's easier for him to put the bandages on her? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead and yeah. have it managed. Okay. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, he's gonna hold the body still. Roll well. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Sixteen plus four is. Okay. Oh, no, go ahead and you uh, bandage up um, using some cloth did we kill, that you have. Did we kill that dragon guy? The, Are you the, okay? Did we kill? No, him? you kept him alive. You specifically tied him up. I'm gonna jump down there and go check on him. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, unconscious. Um, and he's yeah, he's unconscious outside. Are you okay enough? Everyone else is dead. Oh, wait, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> she is still not cognitive. No, but are you okay enough to stand? Like, can I pick her up? I'll hold her and pick. Like, yeah. So as you start her. to hold, like lift her up, she's like she kind of leans on to you, requiring okay. your body weight. To <laughs> Get out of here with that. Um, <laughs> I, um, you bastard, you sleazy I, bastard. That's your chance. I just want to set her on the on the bed. <laughs> the bed's like knocked over. Like, Whoa! Sit down, like, like, sit, like, no, it's down. not. It's not okay, then let's get out of the building. Let's get out of the building because it's. Yeah, you walk her out on fire. Uh, right? Come, come, come. You help carry her downstairs and you put her down to like a on like a bench just to have her sit. Uh, <laughs> it's outside. It's still daylight, so you can see she's got like a light sensitivity from the head trauma. And she no, covered her up. eyes. She's wrapped up. She's wrapped up. Can, can someone else handle her, her eyes besides eyes? Hack on? Why would I wrap her eyes up? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I just wrapped the her head was like trickling her hands. Oh, God. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> Vomiturgy, the sound of God. Is everyone okay? The rest of the party is okay. Yeah, we all made it out. We have a prisoner as well. Um, can I look around? Are any of the patrons prison. still around? No, we're not in the prison. No, no, no. We, we captured <laughs> one of the cultists. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll pull out my cantina or whatever with water and give water it to her. Start yeah. drinking it. Hell yeah. Huh. Right now we're somewhere between uh, freaking water deep and and well not not even the misty forest, bro. We made oh, no no the misty forest is the other way. Ooh, we got Somewhere between the Serpent Hills and Waterdeep. We're still in the tavern. Or yeah, well, the inn. It is the inn, yeah, that we stopped at to rest at. Right. 
we were attacked by cultists. There was a dragon that came. He, you went inside to retrieve something, and they set the building ablaze. We noticed a man with a lot of scars leaving the room right as we entered. Do you remember anything about him? Was he looking for the same thing you were? Everything happened so quickly. No. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I, it's I okay. We have, a, we have a long walk home to still talk about it. You just sit here and rest. I'll be do back. You, do you have a cloak? Oh, oh yeah, here. I'll, with a hood? I'll pull the blanket out of my backpack. And she goes and kind of like wraps it over. <laughs> And you can see kind of her facial composure kind of regains as she's got something wrapped over. Um, she has, you know, some sunlight sensitivity now. And, okay. you know, she, I am... Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, Is everyone okay? No one, no one was hurt. What, uh... You were. What, 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 what has around be beneficial to use right now? Do what? What has around, uh, detect evil, or detect magic? Could Not I try and detect what kind of magic had been used on her, if any? No, because... No. Detect magic, I don't... Read, read me the content of the spell of that, detect magic, because I don't think it can basically tell you, like, so, that a spell has affected this area, unless the spell is actively affecting this area. And so if it's so something it, that has affected her but isn't actively affecting her, that would be difficult. And that's how I would argue whether or not you're able to see something, it, so I would need so to know. It says, for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If right. you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in yeah. the area that bears magic, and you learn its school of magic, if any. Yeah. So the, part of it too is she would be absolutely glowing with divination magic because she's a diviner. So what about the room that she was in though? It would like were the guy to mention you could. I could do it there. Okay. So yeah. I'll so I'll I'll let that pass. I'll be down. honest. It would be dan it would be not dangerous. It would be difficult because the explosion would um, cover. But he was in the window. He was in the window, but the explosion would be the closest thing to magic that you'd be able to potentially. What about because well, he had to get into the room? Magic. Wait, can oh, I just kind of create a restoration? Yeah, but like if a guy nah. dimension doors yeah. out, so like he like mentioned yeah. out, but you anyone can, tell can do the aura. Dimension I mean, you healed her. Yeah. I healed her. Great. Yeah. 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 different though. What is nah, like curses? Or she had I don't know. What? What do you want to cast? Greater restoration on her. You can. Yeah, absolutely. You could. What if? Uh, what conditions does it normally remove? I'll see if maybe I can tie in one of those here. Can I make a perception check on Vidanya's like skull? Did she take any head make trauma? A roll. Um, effective charm or petrified a curse targeting the target's attunement. It was petrify magic. a curse and what else? Um, charming any any one curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item. Any reduction to ability or one effect reducing the hit point max. Right. Yeah. So like, if she lost her like intelligence score. Then greater restoration would heal that. Um, yeah, uh, we'll say that would do it because with like the head trauma and that, we'll say it is kind of cutting so, into her cognitive oh, affection or so no, effect. So I would say greater, greater, sorry, greater restoration would work in that capacity. Okay. Do you cast it on her? Yeah. Does it cost materials to do so? Because now we're dipping into high, higher tier. Dude, spells. I'll start popping gems. And I know revivify costs the 100 gold gem. 100 gold. Diamond dust worth 100 gold. 100 gold. Well, it says diamond dust worth yeah, diamond 100 gold. Dust. Okay, yeah, so for that, um, because I don't technically make you, like, look out for the specific, like, items, um, and we'll work on that maybe, you know, throughout maybe future campaigns to maybe see if we want to try that. I normally Can we don't. just hammer down the gem? So what we'll say is just mark the 100 gold off and you'll be fine. Okay. You're basically paying to cast the spell. What about the precious so, gems that I had? Because I, I still have a hundred one left. Would that work? If we smash it with a hammer? <laughs> but it needs to be diamond, right? Yeah, it yeah. needs to be diamond dust, so no. Uh, yeah. Man. Yeah, we didn't get <laughs> diamonds, dude. That's why I'm saying, like, just mark off the gold amount. My gold. Because that would be a sufficient substitute. So a 16 would discern that she had head trouble? Oh, no. A 16? Yeah. Uh, it, she did have head trouble until a greater restoration was cast on her, and you realized none of the. <laughs> 
Rather the you couldn't you know, let me be a, a doctor for present. one second. So that means that she can just take her bandage off now. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't heal the wound. Oh, it right, right, right. Okay. Kind of repairs like the immediate like shock mm-hmm. and all that. Okay. Um, so as you cast it, she's you see for a second she's like, oh, "Thank you, I appreciate it." I still have a bit of a headache. Not gonna lie. Um, very grateful. Thank you, Lux. Of course. I gave you a little pat on the back. <laughs> I'm so upset. What happened? <laughs> I went upstairs for just a brief moment. Next thing you know, everything was... Boom. You know, happening. Um, what what happened? I mean, she's she's looking see... around, she sees the death dragon, <laughs> uh, you know, that's on the side of the road. It's tail lopped off. And is, our Boris is out there, right? Our Boris is out okay. there with the prisoner, I, just kind of like... I want to point to that. Sitting on him. <laughs> and I want to wanna dehorn the dragon. <laughs> okay. We get a survival roll. Dehorn the dragon. Yeah, it has a horn, like a central horn on its nose. When I notice you doing that, can I? Yeah, you get a young dragon's uh, nose horn. Can you cut me some skulls too, Boris? I need them for a spell. You need what? Some dragon bones. Really? Yeah. Can I make a horn out of one of the horns? Like a. Um, like I'll horn. try and blow a horn like a yeah. No, this is a massive <laughs> horn. So like you could, could I make maybe one out of his. Out of whose? The dragon. Does he have like any smaller? Like a war horn? No, no, no. He's got this no, big like, one. He's, it's like a rhino horn. Does he have any teeth? Though? Yeah, he's got teeth. Can I make a horn out of one? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I'm You're gonna, any it? bones work, though. It doesn't I'm gonna work. take out his teeth, because teeth are made out of the same material as bones, right? Yeah. Are they bones? Uh. Dragon bones? I don't think, well. Okay, well, I don't I know if do, I can remember. I, I, I don't think they're made out of the same material, but I think they're pretty close. Yeah, it'll work. Okay, can I? That's all that matters. I just want to like, remove a scale feet, like, for myself. You can't take their paws. Dude. And then no, the no. teeth for <laughs> them. They're, they're toes. Can I roll more survival? <laughs> like Chips. a rabbit dragon. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna roll. Yeah, to, I'm gonna roll to take this scale. Good. They probably could. Yeah. I got a unnatural twenty. Yeah. Uh, we'll say you go ahead and get five teeth. Hell <laughs> yeah. Can I get one tooth? Uh, I tell the dime. We were assailed by the cult. A uh, dragon and it's a bunch of intense, goonies yeah. and all. It was a cover, it was a ploy, or at least a test, as it looks like. It seems like you came out of it quite well. At the very least, they don't really understand your potential. If I would be concerned about that, it must mean that if they decide to strike at you again, then it won't be as easy. I got a 14 for the scale. Uh, I'll say you get... A half pound of dragon's tail. Okay. A blue dragon's tail. Now, I think that's a little bit more concerning was um, what happened to me, per se. Um, did you guys see any individuals in my room? Uh, a Boris did. He said he was a he was bunch of scars everywhere. Bald. Bald fucker. Yes. That man is one of Faberin's most infamous political assassins that exist. His name is Carrick of Thronis. I investigated into him briefly during my early years in service to your father. Whenever he's listed on the pay ledger of a noble family, their books tend to double triple in size, at the detriment of another house. Sheesh. He was paid by Lady Firel. I suspect he's the man that officially kidnapped you as an infant. Huh? Oh my god. The guy who kidnapped the Boris, dude? He... Goddamn, God damn, hope you hit him he with that arrow. It shouldn't be. He hasn't aged a bit, and it's been decades, a century. I will, I'm concerned. That that sounds concerning. He's very skilled, that's for certain. And he took a few. <laughs> he took some council documents, reports that I had written out. 
so unfortunately what he plans to do with those will be out of our list of opportunities. We must get back to Waterdeep as quickly as we can. Uh, At that point, um, I need you, because you're immediately on her, you, because you're talking with her, and I will let you two, if you choose to, make an insight roll. Fuck my life. I'm too busy whittling my tooth to make a (laughs) hole. Make a uh, whittler's check. I got, oh, I got an 18. 18? Yeah, because I got a plus 9. You can see it. Uh, what'd you roll? A 6. A 6. You don't see it. 12. Uh, you, you, get the, you get physical signs, like her body um, basically saying that she's about to pass out. Uh, and so you're able to catch her as she falls. Nice. So it looks like her body's kind of giving out temporarily. She starts to kind of slow down. Her eyes kind of start to roll back up. And you realize, okay, she's about to drop. And then you just jump in and kind of hold on to her as she, you know, and it, it's the remainder of the trip to Waterdeep is difficult having to physically carry her. The extent of her wounds and damages are a little bit... I'll, I'll bring her, I'll carry her because she's a servant of my father. So I feel responsible in making sure that she I makes it there could safely. could also turn into a and carry all of us. For an hour. <laughs> I could do it multiple times. For, uh, yeah, and then your spells are gone. Oh, okay. you can rest at Waterdeep, right? But, but we still got this prisoner, dog. Don't you want to talk to this prisoner? We just gotta wake him up a little. Wait, is he? Are we dragging him or is he? Walking yeah, we're us? bringing him. I'm under the impression he has to bring him. Can I go over to the prisoner and give him a little nudge? To he's wake a, up? he's no, unconscious. He's how long? Yeah. Is, how long is he? On? You have to is heal him. Did we unmask him at all? Uh, huh? Did we unmask him? Like he's, he's, he didn't off? have a mask. He's a he's a blue dragon. He's a half dragon. Oh. So he's like six five, fully scaled, oh. beefy. Can I emasculate him? No, no, you can't. Because I don't like where that conversation is going. I just want to like make him wa- walk like with only his fucking underwear on. No. No. Nope. We have a bell of shame. <laughs> no. Ding. You, you, you can. Wait, what? You can work? at least strip him of his armor. Okay. We'll say that would be fair. Yeah, all right. Can I? And all of his weapons. Yeah, all no his weapons. weapons. That's reasonable. I couldn't imagine you'd want to carry a prisoner. What kind of weapons did he have? Like he, weapons. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Like what? A sword. What? He had a great sword. Is uh, a human, right? No, no, he's not. Oh my half, fucking god! He's a half dragon. dragon. Can we take his teeth out? Oh my god! No. All right. Well, then let's put a muzzle on him. Guys, we're good guys. We want to talk to yeah, him. But we don't. Yeah, but he has no. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Can I attempt a sleight of hand as health potion on a Nick's backpack? Does he? No, it's it's on my back. No. Does he have a breath attack? Yes. Yes. See, he has a breath attack. Okay, then put a muzzle on his face. Put a muzzle on. I'm aware, but that's a different way of saying. Can we rip his teeth out? No, let's muzzle him. That's because I'm. You're not giving the indication that you're concerned about his breath weapon. It shows you're concerned about him biting you. Because he has a bite attack too, huh? No. Oh, what color, wait, what color is he? Could. Blue. blue. So then, so you guys don't we, listen. Do we have like a, a metal muzzle or something? Because what if he tries to use like a, an electric like thing? He can shock. Nah, the rope's not coming. All right, right. Okay. Can, can, rope can, will work. <laughs> rope will work. Yeah. Can we just douse him in water? Then he can hurt himself. Well, uh, I say. Can we carry a bucket of water. With but us? he's resistant <laughs> to lightning. Oh. Hello. Uh, um, but he still he hurts him, right? He's not immune. It's like me with fire, right? Yeah. What about fire? It doesn't uh, like hurt. Lux, Lux, yeah. Lux, could you could you wake him up a little for us so we could talk to him? I'd rather get to water deep before we wake him. Mm-hmm. Well, what if we're not able to get the proper conversation that we like once we hit water deep I think with him? We want to get Ladanya to a place somewhere where she can be helped first. Mm-hmm. Did you guys not help her? She seemed all right to me. No, she just passed out. So. Well, I, I mean, she, looks all right. she, but she looked a lot. She wasn't like. I mean, we all pass out here I've, and there. I've used high magic on her to keep her safe, and she's still passing out. So she definitely needs someone. Well, all right. <clears throat> so, what's the plan to move? Are you turning into a big animal, or are we just gonna walk? I can turn into an animal. All right. Let's get, uh, just, uh, do your thing. <laughs> okay. And, uh, we'll pack up. Giant Bronto sword. Alright, here's what we'll do. Here's, here's what we'll do. I'll take my rope. I'll take my rope. And I want to tie it around the half dragon's feet. Bronto sword. And I want to try it, tie the other end to the tree. You have a tail? 
I want to tie the other end of the rope to his tail. And Brontosaurus that, aren't real. Dragon. Yeah, they were, they were made up by two scientists that put different dinosaur <laughs> paleontologists that put Wait, different dinosaur the, bones together. Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus aren't real, and I'm not lying. That's not a conspiracy. It's a fact. Well, they're real in this universe, it. dude. Well, no. What are they? Because I, I know a dinosaur. They're real in D and D. Okay, that's all that matters. <laughs> I don't care if they're real in real life. <laughs> you know, they exist in really. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> If I can get a mini, you know what? I have a woolly mammoth. That's all that matters. That's yeah, all so I care about. Awesome. I hope I can get a pet. Oh, you're one, you're one like of one of those like yeah. vegan dinosaurs. Yeah, see, I thought you were those one of like the big run. Vegan, vegetarian. <laughs> That's what I meant. Okay. And, and they're herbivores. <laughs> I, the the, I could not think of the herbivores. word. Yeah. yeah. Dog, what do you you think they're herbivores tearing up dinos? Do you not, do you <laughs> not know what a herbivore is? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a giraffe version oh, of a I was dinosaur. thinking omnivore. In my right, like a carnivore eats purely like, meat. Hey, meat. But we are just displaying the stupidity yeah. of our party. Plants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Fifth grade earth science, dude. It's been a while, okay? Okay, so... It ain't been that long. Your... It takes a few days to get you back to the water deep. You guys were close, but not kind of fully there. It takes a few days to get the water deep. <laughs> so what does um, this guy do while we're trying to... Can I talk with him on the way to water deep? When he wakes up? How long he, is the water? He definitely you can. Uh, a part of the problem is that you start to recognize that this... The prisoner that you were able to, to kind of hold on to has probably about as little information as you could possibly want. Um, I just want to ask him purely a soldier, guy, purely a warrior... Um, he gives off nothing. Like he's dedicated to the cult, and it's it's a difficult game to play. Um, you guys come up with the idea over the course of trying to interview this guy over over a series of days and trying to get information out of him before turning into water deep that you very much could just hand him over to the council, and you know they might be able to find someone who could get this guy to crack, or or you could let him go, or you could kill him. You have several no. options in regards to how you want to go about it. But the realization that he's definitely unwilling to get, like, it's going to take intense scrutiny and interrogation on levels that you guys really just don't have the time for in order to get information out of this guy. And he's not really that high ranking. Even though he's got, like, the purple armor, he, him, of himself, is more of, like, the warrior, like, the fighting style, like, of the army, you know, like, the actual, like, soldiers. Nah, dude, let the, let the witches have his mind. Yeah, yeah. they'll it's find right. something. We can yeah. just turn him in. Yeah. Um, Madonia doesn't physically get better over the few days while she's still cognitive thanks to Lux's greater restoration um, it appears as if she has received pretty serious wounds um, fortunately none are fatal but they are impacting on her ability to travel so when you guys are able to get to Waterdeep um, fortunately you know having the pin for the count you know for the sword or the council was a fortunate thing to be gifted and it helps signal the guards that you know they need to treat your request for assistance as, as like as seriously as possible um and they're able to carry her to a an infirmary while they wait to bring her to you know maybe higher end clerics and priests that are here within just the city alone that can actually take a little bit more closer care and and physicians and you know kind of get an idea of, of the extent of damages um and, after, and a lot of that is stressful. It's a lot of things that are happening at once. It's a very chaotic kind of transfer of, of people and, and movement through the city um, where you finally, after, after being able to kind of catch your breath for a moment, you realize that you stand uh, within the halls of the, of the council chambers. Um, Ooh, look, with the prisoner? No, 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 no. The prisoner's been given off too. Like, you guys, like, just to talk through that whole pr- process instead of like playing every minute of it. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of transferring people over. You're giving people over you know, for interrogation, you're giving Madonna over, you're following to make sure she arrives there safely. And then once you're done, you, you know, you have like brief conversation with like Leos and Erlanthar, for example, you know, everything's good. It turns out that with, upon your arrival, he's actually grabbing the remainder of the delegates. They're gonna host a council meeting here soon. Um, so that you guys have an opportunity oh, no. to talk about what, you know, what you guys have just done since that's kind of your role as a part of the council is to, you know, act on their behalf and then come back in and, and kind of recount what you've done. Um, you you have a bit of time. Can we get uh, a second to breathe? Can I ask Arlanthar, is there a somewhere where we could get more appropriate attire for the setting? I just feel like, and I look around, does anyone else look like adventurers around us? Uh, no, you get a lot of, like, armed guards. 
I do. And like a lot of soldiers. So and like and that's that's it, right? Just soldiers and, but like, and then like if, the council but like people. If you, yeah, but if you were to find adventurers, honestly, you guys would look a little bit above tier. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, put it this way: you guys have slain three dragons. Yeah. I'm not wearing any armor. Let's You're not let me wearing do this. Any What's your guys' yeah, passive insights? I know yours is going to be high. Yeah. Mine's, you you will notice. Mine's a 19. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's your passive what insight? The... 10 plus your insight roll. Mine's 12. 12? 11. 11? 14. 14. You, right, so you, hear, you hear like the smidgest faint of it, like enough where it kind of kind of catches you off guard, but okay. you hear it. Like people recognize you guys. Like you guys, and it's not of, uh, of like okay. knowing, oh, that's our Boris. They just know you collectively. You know, the, the, the content or the context of the, the sword of the council with the growing threat, word's gotten out. The people, you know, people are starting to talk. Rumors are starting to get created. Fear is already getting set into place of who to trust and who not to trust. But the recognition that the council that has been gathered, which was a huge deal, people knew these delegates were coming, that they've created a force to go out on the behalf and, you know, slay dragons. Rumor of the attack on the on the tavern has already made their way through, which you're able to kind of hear, like, things are, are kind of smuggling through. Uh, the town well, I travels just, quickly. I just ask, because it would be cool to have some kind of, like, formal piece of attire that would unify us in the eyes of the court. Like, if we could all get, like, the you same... You three are some ragtag people from some bump that's... farming village off in the, <laughs> in the Bucklands of nowhere. Well, that's what I'm saying. You guys, are, you're, you guys look a bit more top tier of adventures because of the, the equipment you've acquired, such as, you know, the Redwater Gourd, the, you know, Haas, you have a sentient weapon. Medzo's Blade. Medzo's Blade. You have a very fine-tuned rapier. You have a giant, you know, you have a a scepter. You know, you guys have acquired less than less than like actual like physical, um, and that's mostly because again you have two people that are completely unarmored. You are not proficient in armor, if I'm correct. Do you uh, wear armor? Um, there's a picture of what a, a blade singer wears. That's basically what. I yeah. Wear. So because wizards are not proficient in armor, and you're proficient so, in light armor. But you're not wearing. You're anything? not proficient in any, are you? No. Yeah. You guys don't have armor. Shoot. I'm just wearing silver. You have two unarmored. We have four unarmored people too that actually have unarmored have a defense. Wow. So no wonder you guys don't look like <laughs> Do a, a group. Bottle? But you have a little no. bit of time for yourself. Like you guys can like armor. color code. Nah. What? That would be the best I could say. You guys don't have armor. I it's will. not like you can get plate mail with no, a, no, no, no. with an emblem on the front. No, I just want like a cloak to like we all wrap over us while we're in council, and then when we leave, we can just shove it in a backpack until the next council. Bring this up. I will roleplay this. Bring what up? I don't want to wear a robe. Or a robe. See, this is I, robe. I would like to I'm get like, like, like a, a robe or a that's cloak what or some kind of like formal. Like, even if we just get that's like, what I like, wear. At least like, like a piece of cloth that we drape over our shoulder. Sure. But just something that says we're all a cohesive them. group, you know? Wait, what color? Red? That's fine. I'm fine with the color red. I'm not. You guys like the color red? No. I mean, that, my color was red anyway. I wear green. So I, mean, yep. I I will refuse I refuse to wear any robe that they try and throw on me. It's not a robe. Okay. I'm, I'm just wearing my clothes. Headband. Is that fine? Like do no. I have to wear yeah, a, no, no, no. No. Yeah. no. Absolutely not. <laughs> my clothing is green and brown. It is not okay. There's this matching, new um, thing matching kilts. It's a, what do you guys think about? It's like a headband, but it goes all if, the way around. If you guys it's made one, well, Atronox says we should Does wear matching kilts. Do? If you guys made one that was like black with like gold trim I might wear it I'm temporarily gold. but I'm not gonna wear a bright standing color I'll wear a black one with gold trim I introduced that's all I'll wear I'm not going to wear some silly color of yours Wait, pick something professional am, am I able to pick that for him because I am red. wealthier what no Royal a red. nice like I will not wear your like a colors. black robe you know with gold trim red. sure what so okay you have it bleed. Game. What? You have the robe. What do you have? have what? On? The black robe with the gold trim, you were saying? Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, I we just got a robe. Is robe. that like, what you were like wearing? No, something. but that's what I have. I can get it. Is it mink? Oh. Okay. We all get one, dude. Everyone just throws on a nice little cloak. That's black and mink. with gold trim. Yeah. Black, no, you don't, trim. you don't need a yeah. mink. Red it's a uh, mink. If you want it to be like <laughs> you're getting a more like all warm things, things to not really loose. Especially a board. It's gonna be, it might be like they light material, it's a bit stretchy, mean. but not like baggy, right? So like it won't have Wait, the extra the room. room. Do you want it more form fitting or do you want it baggy? What do you think? Oh, baggy. I, 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 Nick would probably want form fitting, but I want baggy. Can I have like expensive? You want baggy? 
Yeah. Bagging? You're gonna do martial arts while you actually you fight with. Wait, the what is it? Well, no, I'm gonna take the robe, he, he's robe, uh, robe so this off. This is like ceremony. He, yeah, this ju okay. this is just yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, going kind of into. It's got like the big ceremony. hands, kind of like the like the Agrabah style. Sure, yeah. Kind of, you know, where they're like bigger and baggier on the bottom ends of the pants, <laughs> like that level of baggy. Yeah. Like a you say baggy. Dancer. I want a baggy. <laughs> he does it in his free time. <laughs> um. You have, yeah, you have a bit of time to kind of get, you know, some stuff and, and definitely to clean yourself. Like, they, the, the big thing is they want to give you guys the opportunity to um, shower, have a quick hot meal, so they feed you. Um, you get the opportunity to bathe. What did we eat? <laughs> Something good? Duck. Hell yeah. Yeah, roast duck. Um, and the finest of vegetables. Potatoes and a nice tart, a dessert, <laughs> and some tender one. <laughs> Is there a sweet roll? Sure. Y'all mad? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sweet roll. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you guys are ushered into the council chambers. You see the same individuals that you had met um, and been introduced to in the first council meeting, kind of gathered around. Lady Lara Silverhand, the new Overlord of Waterdeep. Um, Lord Daggle Never Ember, um, the King of Neverwinter, the Lord of Neverwinter, um, who, by the way, has now an advisor that he has brought to the court. And she is a, a human, um, you see a human female that kind of stands behind her, or behind him and off to the side. This is his second one, isn't it? No, Laryl Silverhand had uh, an oh, advisor. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, because she had uh, Dallas uh, Silmer Health. Whereas uh, Daggle Never Ember has officially brought an advisor to the court. Um, you see King Melandrock of the Elven Land. Uh, you see <laughs> Marshal Older Ravenguard, the grand, uh, you know the, the leader of the Flaming Fist, Ambassador Conrad Braunamble of the Dwarven Alliance. Um, Tarn Hornblade, the mage from Silvery Moon. Uh, Sir Istval, the kind of like ex adventurer that's kind of leading on behalf of Cormir. Um, as well as the one winter hound on Darfroom, and then uh, Lady Romalia Haventree. So, Deland and uh, Melandrock have been spending a lot of time together, huh? You were told that Delon Winterhound has been assisting King Melandrock with some concerns. Yeah. Okay. There are more that the council has to deal with that's outside of just specifically you. Yeah. But you guys no, are being no, reserved just, for some pretty specific and serious tasks. Thinking. Who else has been buddy buddy lately? Um Like do we get to hear do we get to hear what they've been up to or You haven't you haven't known. Alright. In fact at the drop of uh Vidanya's mention that Delon Winterhound knows a bit more about what's going on in the Misty Forests. Mm -hmm. It is what indicates that the council is doing things outside of just dealing with Well, I remember we heard we heard he was repelling dragon attacks. He was assisting the elves of the Misty yeah. Forest, yeah, yeah. because it, there were green dragon attacks that okay. were going on. Is she sitting with us? Of no, uh, she is still, so she's under she's kind of the, intense care. The, oh, right, right, right. The oh, hospital. I totally forgot she's injured. Yeah. Um... Out of at this point, you see Lady Laryl Silverhand uh, step up, and at that point, kind of the room falls silent. Um, she commands an aura of attention, and when everyone looks and turns to her, <coughs> greetings, everyone. Thank you for convening for our second official council meeting. The Sword of the Council has returned, our illustrious adventurers, um, heroes in your own right after some of the exploits that we've heard. We are grateful to the gods that your travels have been not only safe, despite a few dangers, ultimately safe, and hopefully fruitful, which we will, you know, we will discuss here shortly. We are all aware, as she kind of looks around, of the current state of Delegate Vidania Cardinal, who was prevented in early demise, thanks to our heroes. Might we take just a moment to offer prayers, silence, for a swift recovery? And you see everyone just kind of, mm. 
Um, those who <laughs> have faith begin to pray, <laughs> and those who don't respect the moment for what it is. Her. Very well. Thank you all. Now, we wish to discuss um, the effects of the journeys that you've gone on. We know that we've sent you out to do a few things. Oh, they want to hear from us we right away. We wish to know about your journey northward to see moving ice, whether you found the Drakhorn as we were hoping to find, um, or despite us knowing that you were successful in securing an alliance with the Arcane Brotherhood, it seems as Macoth the Crimson has already made contact on their behalf in order to assist us with some matters that we might need their arcane expertise in. Oh. That, close. with that, we are mostly grateful. Year Dewan, mostly. Yes. Heck on cost. <laughs> Despite, um, or outside of that, we also are aware that at behest of Erlanthar, the Ocean Erlanthar of the Harpers, um, under direction of Lady Romalia Haven Tree, has sent you, I believe, to the Serpent Hills to oh. search for Varon, a worm speaker. I wish to know whether either of these tasks were successful. Um, and please be as descriptive and detailed as possible. Council members, delegates, I ask. That while our sword of the council provides testimony to the events that they've experienced, that you refrain from as many outbursts as possible, keep your questions direct. And I apologize for any scrutiny. Wait, 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 I just want to clarify. She did say that they know we didn't get the drag one? Or she's at she's, she's still, asking. Okay. She knows you got the she knows it because the Arcane Brotherhood has made contact with the with the council. So she knows about that. Okay. Um, but she doesn't Obviously, like, there's no Dracula okay. here, so, like, okay. she wants to know. No, that's fine. Um, so, uh, as for the first matter, we did not find the Drakhorn. Makoth had told us that it had already departed by the time we had made it up to the Sea of Moving Ice. Um, I don't remember, actually, if she, I don't recall her telling us if she had known which direction it had gone in, only that it had moved on to continue blaring its message. Um, as for the Serpent Hills, we did come across the tomb of Didarius. It was found you, you to be... You um, see, Anthar Froom stands up. <clears throat> Hold on for a moment, uh -oh. uh, if you may. Go back to the Sea of Moving Ice. Uh-oh. Drakhorn, you didn't find it. No, we weren't able to. Where was it located? Do you at least know where it was? Uh, let me one more, one more second. Let me double check. It, it was, I believe, in the city of Oyabiktan. It was where we found the entrance to the lair. What, what is that? Uh, it was a, it was an old village set up outside the entrance to the lair of the dragon that resided up there. What became of this dragon? Um, Did he reside in the no, Oyabiktan, as you say? No, he was dead by the time we had got there. Makoth, she told us the legend of Old White Death, but... She was there to recover some tomes, and she went in to see it, and she found the tomes. You guys killed them. I know, I know, I know. Why but, are you lying? But, because you're lying. Yeah, but they didn't like that last time. And it's a lot easier to just say it was already dead. Go ahead and make a deception Mother for me, please. Uh, motherfucker. I just wanted confirmation that maybe you had made a mistake on information, because I know he had a mate. Look over here like, I don't know. Okay? I guess we'll see. Goodness, dude. Yeah. How's the 12 sound? 12. Lux. The dragon was dead? The dragon, yes, is dead. Is or was? Or was, yes. <laughs> Motherfucker, dude. Now... I worry he is dead. Damn, I don't get the credit. Was the confirmation of the death of this dragon what caused the Arcane Brotherhood to reach out to us? Were you asking me? Yes. I'm sorry, repeat the question. Was oh my god, the we death like of liars. this dragon was the death of this dragon what caused the arcane brotherhood to reach out to us? Was it the conditional it the term the of their alliance? The tones. Oh uh, no, it was the tones. What did those tones entail? You picked them up, dude. What tones? 
the spells that we got to fight the dragon with. Those, those, those were just trolls. Oh, no. The tomes are, are like bugs. Speak up. Do you know what the tomes huh? are doing? Do you know something about the tomes? I'm not <laughs> very familiar with uh, our, our, our so, the tomes. So, it tomes? would be a fair question to say that yes, you do not know what knowledge you gave over to the Arcade Brotherhood in, in securing their friendship. Their we alliance. believe that the alliance was more important than the information contained in some old texts of theirs. I'm aware of what you believe. Arboris, do you know anything about the Arcane Brotherhood? No. Um, in, in what aspect, sir? Uh, any. I know that they do a lot of magic. Right. And I know that they're, um... They do not police themselves in the same Judge form as counsel. the Mages of Silvery Moon, where my esteemed colleague, and he looks over towards Taren Hornblade, they don't police themselves with the same strictures, the same virtue of restraint. And so, the Arcane Brotherhood does, has, and will continue to employ wizards and mages of the more dark-minded ambitions. My concern is that you have potentially assisted in that, which will, down the road, cause harm. I, I, so, my concern is whether any thought of the alliance that you had made had crossed your mind, or if the goal was purely to get as many alliances as possible. I, I see your concern, and I wouldn't say that our goal was nearly as um, narrow-minded as just getting as many allies as possible. Um, the Arkin Brotherhood, in, in respect with maybe the poor decisions that we, we look upon, are, are very powerful people, and... Well, to be fair, it sounds like you didn't even consider them. We it sounds like you didn't know what was in those tomes, and it sounds like, as far as I can tell, that the goal was purely to get their alliance, whether you might say so or not. The lack of knowledge of the tomes, the lack of knowledge of their history, doesn't really indicate the more outward mentality. Now, I want it to be clear. I wasn't denied. I know, I know the efforts that you three specifically, less for you, unfortunately, and I mean this in no disrespect, I know the efforts that the three of you can put in. I watched your success in Greenest. I watched your success on the travel to Elturel. I watched your success as you traveled north to Waterdeep when we sent you off back long ago. I'm not in any way, shape, or form trying to discredit your actions. But, again, on behalf of the Order of the Gauntlet, these are the things that we concern for. We are less inclined to like the Arcane Brotherhood because of the convictions that they don't consider. The convictions of the goodness of people, the prosperity of others, the well-being and the safety and security of those that might be underneath them. So, I don't mean it disrespectfully. All I would say is, in the future, consider the things when you make potential allies. Um, sure. Outside of that, the death of a dragon. The I would love to hear more about the worm speaker. I'm sure I might be able to change my mind on a few things of your recent actions. But the death of a dragon alone, if there's a dragon that is no longer on the playing field, whether it's been, it sounds like it was confirmed that he was long dead, is a good thing for me. Uh, we should have just said we So, guess they'll, they'll never know. Were there yes, any other questions about the Sea of Moving Ice? I, I was going to say something. Oh, go ahead. You oh, go first. Okay. You go first. Um, and you, you, you had a question about the, um, uh, Varong. Huh? Not necessarily. No. I meant more as a council. I, oh. I wish to hear your account of it. Um, does any other delegates have a, a, a question for the group? You see, uh, King Melandrag actually lifts his hand at this point, and you see ladies, you know, they yes, kids, kind of the <laughs> proper recognition. Yes, I have one specific question. Oh no, here we go. I believe in virtue. I do. I believe in specific virtues. Some of the colleagues we have here are more virtuous than others, and some are less virtuous than those, but prioritize the virtues that they employ. I would be amongst that list. The reason why I say that is because one of those virtues that I believe in strictly is honesty. I suspect that you are not being honest with us in the recount of your tale. Whether that is to hide a failure that you have made, error in judgment or some costly mistake that you wish to not bring upon our ire, I urge you, as someone who has fathered, has lost a son, and has one currently fighting my wars at home, that in order to breed that level of success, you have to give 
people the freedom to make mistakes, but the freedom to be corrected. So it appears as if, I suspect, you are not being honest in your account. I would give you the opportunity, if you are being dishonest, to correct that. Sure, well, would you guys like to be honest from the start, then? Um, our friend over here is the one who killed the white dragon. Okay. You, you hear kind of like a weird silence. Uh, and you can see Melandrop loops around. Now, I don't... For every delegate in this room, I do not call them out in hopes of discrediting them. They have slain three dragons as of yet. Mm-hmm. That is, as of now, performatively more than any of you have done. And I would say that my oldest son is doing just under that, fighting my wars back home. Now, unless any of you have someone doing something similar, an older Raven God, I would implore you not to be boisterous in this moment. And you can see he, he looks like he was getting ready to say something. I ask that we give people of lesser noble standing the ability to be amongst the common folk when they are with us and to not look down upon to a degree the actions that we know people do in our presence. If I could add one more thing, um, understand that some of you might be upset that we even took the hands in in killing a dragon that really wasn't an aggressor, um, but we didn't go there for conflict. We went there to learn, um, and 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 the dragon, quite frankly, wanted to eat us. You see, you see, Delon speaks up, so to have it correctly. I get the impression that you've lied because of me. Well, um, it, it, and all it, the it, other council members who like dragons. Not a lot of people like dragons, and to be fair, I don't like dragons. But the balance of nature is important between predator and prey between good and evil, the yin and yang, philosophically and naturally, balance is key to sustenance. Now, we will talk about it soon, but we have a dragon problem. Dragon problem that, unfortunately, we might have to throw you at. I do not care for the loss of the few dragons that I know will destroy Towns presently. What I care for is the disrespect of balance. And that, uh, I completely respect that. I definitely hate what happens next. <laughs> we got attacked. You see, um. <laughs> it wasn't our team. You see, oh. you see Sir Istval kind of stand up. Well, since we've gotten all of that out of the way, um, let us talk about the Serpent Hills, the. Worm speaker, I've heard several reports of adventurers getting lost in the Serpent Hills, supposedly charmed and seduced by the snake people. Yes. They say the hills have eyes. They're, they're, I can <laughs> confirm as an elf... It's an old tale. <laughs> as an elf with uh, special protective uh, powers against charming, I, I can confirm there were Yanti up there. Right. Quite a few. Their ancestry is ever so beneficial during times like that. Of course. Um, it is actually a very good natural defense against creatures of that dark nature. Now, if anyone would like to recount your adventure in the Serpent Hills, we would be play- pleased to hear it. It was quite interesting. Um, I believe the spirit of, of Didarius actually um, possesses that, that tavern, or the cavern, or um, odd tome. The spirit of who? Di- 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 Darius? It was a tomb of Didarius that we had come across, which doubled as a divination chamber into right. the um, layers of hell. You see, he, he goes, again, uh, it, it was less of the, the spirit, more of, like, who you're talking who, about. We, you see, you see, Laryl Silverhand goes, to be a little bit more historically accurate, um, he is a name. He is an, one of the ancient diviners that kind of pushed the early levels of divination rituals amongst different schools of divination thought. I think he was pushed out for uh, being willing to contact 
entities around the large spectrum of different options. And so it was deemed dangerous and uh, was kind of pushed away from the school of divination as we know today. Bingo. They were, uh, the cult was using it to deal with Zariel's bearded devils. At that point, you see Antar Froom kind of go. What name did you just say? I said Zariel. It was, it was what we had heard them say. So about up, and, you, and you see um, Zariel will you be see very Conrad, pleased. Conrad, Bronn, and Will goes, Well, Froom, are you just going to sit there and look flabbergasted? Are you going to tell us who this Zariel person that's got your stun locked? Well, it seems that only so many of us know our history, uh, as well as our mythology. There are, in the concept of the Nine Hells, there are rankings, hierarchies, the strongest of which are known as arch -depth. Paladins of my order wouldn't even consider throwing me at them. They are dangerous and deadly. Gods in their own right. Zariel is the believed, as far as mythology stands, archdevil of the layer of Avernus, the first layer of hell. The reason why I know that is because she is tied to the founding of Elturel. She is a hero that lit led Elturel's holy knights, the Hellriders, the guard that protect the city from the dangers outside, into hell. Never returned. Damn. It says that her sacrifice was what allowed Elturel to be where it is today. But then they found cults popping up in her name. Twisted, dark, malicious, perverse from the original Zariel, the hero of Elturel that we all knew. That's when the suspicions began. It was confirmed at a point. She is a vengeful person. If she is actively assisting the cult, it means that she wishes to see Tiamat released from the Nine Hells as much as they do. And that's not good. You can see Dagolt never ever stands up. With that, at least we're in agreement. I have... an offer to provide you. I'm an, an advisor who will provide that momentarily. Continue with your description of the details involving Baron. Um, so we had watched that deal, the tail end of it take place. They closed the divination portal and then headed through another portal into a chamber which um, one of the serpent people who we had managed to get some information from called it, or I'm not, not them, Didarius, the spirit actually communed with was it a Boris? I it was a Boris. So. Had com it communed with him and told him of this secret. Uh, what 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 was it exactly? Like, I forget. Was it was it like a secret a world, portal? right? No, or, it was just or a, just because it was a it was another portal. But where did yeah, it go? Portal was synonymous for oh, door. door. The door. Yeah, that's right. I forget. I keep <laughs> yeah, forgetting it was that just was a an conversation. Extension of the temple that yeah. was dedicated to yeah. the Auntie. Okay, no, no, no. So th there was an extension of the temple, which upon in investigating further, we had come into a room where the Yonti had Varam prisoner and they had him laid out on a table as some kind of offering and through our best efforts we were not able to reach him in time as they took a dagger and plunged it into him which ultimately caused his expiration however we were able to commune with his spirit momentarily and figure out the location of another worm speaker you see Hornblade um, at that point goes well, it seems that this is the second web speaker that unfortunately we've lost. Now, I don't know about you, I would really appreciate the opportunity to be able to delve into the minds of these individuals. It's well, becoming incredibly difficult. I'm, at that point, before you talk, you see Conrad Braun and will step up and go, For once I side with the mage, I would like to have a few rounds well, with one of these little so worm speakers. I a little bit forgot to have brought well, this up. Well, hold on, I'm not done oh, yet. I get no. that you're trying to defend yourself. No, 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 no. I have a. But we have some concerns here. Oh no. Not the least of which is Romalia Haventry, whose husband was murdered at the hands of this cult, and now they're highest-ranking officials. We can't get our hands on. They keep slipping through. Granted, I'm sure there are those in this room that are excited to hear that there's another one that is bitten in dust. But information is key in this war. It is going to be monumental. Now, I, I can't stress enough that there are three additional web speakers. 
Well, it is unfortunate to hear that this one has slipped through the cracks. Unfortunate. And I hear you. The thrum of war, the fierceness of battle. So you said you couldn't make it in how, time. How? I get that. What I'm saying is we must now take into consideration that we are losing. But out of, a bit of options. out of game, how how confident is Hakon that Talus is going to be the next White Worm speaker? Like, That's is, a goal. is that is that whether that, that happens? That, that was what I was going to respond with. Was well, well, potentially the lady who's next in line to be the next White Worm speaker. I'm not friendly with her, but she promised not to kill me the next no, time I saw her. Don't tell them that. I, they, they already like know about her. We told them. Yeah, but told they're not going to like that. You that we're 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 buddy buddy. Well, with he them. just said we need information, and she's going to give us information yeah, because she gave us the information right, that the right, cult was it. coming to get us at okay, the tavern. Say it. We would not be here if she had not warned us that the cult was coming to attack us. But she didn't promise to kill us. No, no, because I took she her wand deal. and then I made the deal that she would get her wand back if the next time I saw her, she would not be hostile towards us. She is willing she didn't to make, see, you see, um... She just offered that once you gave her the wand. She didn't make a deal that with was my. You that was my crux to give the wand back to her. You see Romalia Raventree for the first time since the First Council, she stands up. And everyone's been expecting to hear kind of what she has to say. Originally, I was displeased with you at the thought of losing another one of my husband's murders to the infinite void of the abyss where their souls belong. However, I appreciate subtlety. I know the complexities of espionage, subterfuge. This palace, do you think she's redeemable? And do you think she's useful? I think she can be very useful. As a double agent to work against the grid. I absolutely think so. She only needs a push in the right direction. And money. And, and money, and a, and a promise of a good life when this is all done. Fortunately, in my line of work, you know that there are several people that are worth buying. Ethan saved you here. Technically, he saved me. Is this, this, this has been the long game, This bro. is not This has been game. the long game this since is the first time I interacted with her. But this is not I'm book. initially displeased, like I said, at hearing that another one of my husband's potential murderers, the ones that have plotted his death, is dead. That won't go away. But you have a chance to redeem yourself if you're able to get us a consistent line of communication, of, 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 of information. That is priceless. If you can secure that, you will have erased all of my displeasures in regards to the loss of worm speakers. This is not canon. <laughs> Outside of that, if I have no further questions, anyone else? No. Good. Um, Silverhand? What else was I going to say? And you see, uh. Wait! Lady Silverhand at this point kind of steps, or stands up and goes, Yes, Hakon, did you have anything else to add? Oh, just that we. Well, I mean, I assume that the council already knows this, but what Varam had told us was that the Green Worm Speaker Galvin was at Jean Thal's tower in the Misty Forest. Blue. Or, no, he was green. He's the green one. No, we. No. Galvin's blue. He's blue. Okay, Galvin's That's blue. That's why I sent a blue yeah. worm speaker. My apologies. Or a blue, sorry, blue dragon. That's why I sent a blue dragon to kill you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Misty. Is the Jean Thal Tower in nope. the Misty Forest? No, okay, okay. You okay. don't know where it is. Okay, that's right. <laughs> well, that being said, do we have any further indication as to additional worm speakers' locations? Um, no, but the spirit. Talus did also warn us, and I, I, again, I'm sorry, I should have brought this up earlier. The cult is very acutely aware that we are after the masks, and she warned us that we need to be more concerned with the mask that we have. And I want to look at wh whoever is the one that's holding the black mask, whichever guy it is, the one that like, has it protected. I want to make sure I understand your statement correctly. Talus, no. Your, your so-called mm -hmm. informational... Acquaintance mm -hmm. has stated that since the cult is aware that we have a mask, that the cult is saying, the suggestion of a cult member, is that our priority should be over that individual mask, 
versus the other four. It right? should be, she just told us to be wary, to be careful, that they might, it, to lead us on to the thought that they probably are going to be trying to take it from us very soon. Why don't we break it? Ding, ding, ding. That's a bad assumption. Breaking magical items is difficult. They're magically bound. In order to do so, we would have to look into it extensively to ensure there's no wards on it, especially, exactly. especially if it's tied to the freedom of a goddess. You're talking about magical powers that tend to transcend what mortals are capable of. We can look into that as an option. I know many here, she puts her hands up and like, like a kind of relax. Many here would be very unfortunate to go down that route, but we can consider it. I do think that the suggestion and caution is warranted. Older Raven God, I ask that you not double, not triple. You've you have been very, very honest and very proud of the size of the flame of this mercenary outfit. I want you to quadruple the amount of people that you have protecting the one mass that we are in possession of. And I, as the open lord of Waterdeep, will ensure that Waterdeep compensates you adequately for it. See, old the Raven Guard kind of leaky. He actually leans back in his chair at that point. <laughs> Let someone understand. I will accept those terms. We appreciate the com compensation. However, we are here to work together. I will not ask that of you. This is a joint effort. And yes, I will add, I, I was considering doubling the guard. Quadrupling for extra effort, I feel, is a bit of an overkill, but tactically, it is a smart decision. So, <laughs> yes, we will do that. <laughs> that in your way, that I am the biggest army that stands in favor of. Oh, and he drives a lifted truck. <laughs> <laughs> His ele he drives a war elephant. He rides a war elephant, not a war horse. It's on pegs. <laughs> or, or stilts. <laughs> no, it's just an elephant, not a horse. That's the lift. That's the deity equivalent of his... His, his wagon's got those big bike wheels. From like the <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Well, that being said... We have a few things to bring to your attention as ways to uh, send you off uh, for the future. Now, we've one of them kind of stands along the lines of alliances. In fact, we imagine that this might be the most difficult thing we ask you to do, seeing as um, it is evident, again, no disrespect, that your diplomatic talents are sorely lacking. <laughs> Unfortunately, that wasn't uh, an option for us to consider. It appears as if a secondary council has convened. A council that concerns more about what happens in the grand scope of the war that we wage. A war against dragons. Therefore, a council of dragons has convened. Five ancient dragons of the metallic type have convened and have sent an advisor at which point the human female that sits behind Daggle Never Ember kind of perks herself up. Has sent an advisor on behalf of that council to ask specifically for the four of you hmm? to meet with them. On peaceful measures? They're metallic. Yes. Yeah, oh, the, metallic. They're, they're metallic. Ones, yeah. You see this advisor uh, <laughs> Sorry, stands Sorry, I thought stands chromatic. Up, <laughs> stands up. Hello? My name is Elia. I'm here to represent. Like she said, there's no better way to say it. What's her Each name? Dragon. Elia. Elia. Okay. What race My is she? Master, she's human. Ot Otari Liacarnos. The ancient silver dragon. Has asked for the four of you specifically. The Council of Dragons is concerned about, without giving too much information away, they're concerned about partnering with mortals and wish to wage their war on their own. They see benefit of working with mortals, but they only wish to speak with you. For what reason? I dare not contest. I cannot comprehend the minds of dragons. Such as beings as old and as ancient as powerful as these five. Whenever you're ready, 
I will assist you in traveling to their designated location, which will be, That's which cool, is man. undisclosed for the current stretch of time. And then she goes ahead and sits back down. Silverhand goes, I can't stress enough that securing the metallic dragons in this war is a huge priority. There have been ancestral clashes with dragons of any type. It's in the history of the Dwarven people. And you can see Conrad, Bron Ebel, and Blue of it! We're worm slayers! <laughs> right. Also causing problems, both historically and presently, amongst the elven races. These are ancient beings. Dragons are prideful. Surely for it. They may hold grudges. They might. Be mindful and do everything. And at this point, she actually steps down to like the pedestal. You guys are kind of in that central pedestal area. She steps down and, and kind of comes up to you a little bit more um, man to man. I would say more just like personally. Mm-hmm. And kind of puts her arms on the edge of the pedestal, like both open kind of loosely, and goes, and I can't stress enough. Please, don't fuck this up. Oh, yeah. These dragons. Yeah, no, we need them. Good. We'll have to do the talking. The long, the long Winterhound steps up and goes, oh, if we're done talking about that, I have a war to wage. In, uh, the Missy Forest, dragons have been attacking. Green dragons, specifically. Uh, it helps. I've been allying with Melindrox's oldest son, Prince Alagathis, to route the cult from different areas in the woods. We have to stop the dragon. But unfortunately, my forces are spread too thin. I need your help in slaying that beast. Dragon attacks have stopped momentarily since I've increased the elven patrols. I've been able to kind of direct and work alongside Alagathis um, more closely. They've slowed down, but I don't think they will end. In fact, I think they're preparing to ramp up. While I'm sure that the dragons would not like to be kept waiting, there will be a lot of elven lives lost if we are impatient and can't handle the death of this dragon as swiftly as possible. I don't wish to spend Melindrock's forces needlessly. However, Prince Alagathis has made it clear, and so have the elves. They are proud to defend their homes, and they will gladly lay their lives down to protect their families. I just ask that we don't needlessly let them do so. I At see. that point, um, he sits right down and Silverhand goes, while I'm certain that puts you in a very kind of sticky situation, the order in which you do this must be your decision, and your decision alone. We can urge you in a different direction based off of individual opinions amongst the, the council, but as our sword, we gave you the discretion. As you enacted it in going to the Sea of Moving Ice first, search for the Drakorn, and searching for a worm speaker second. I implore you to make a wise decision to consider the outcomes and the consequences of that decision as it will impact what you leave behind. Welcome to diplomacy. It's not fun. Do you have any questions? Now is the opportunity for you to ask us. Is there anything you need from us? Anything we can do to assist you? How can we support you? How quickly can you get us out to the the land of the the land in which our elves are fighting out there? Swiftly. <laughs> Teleportation circles are a hell of a thing. And how quickly can we get there to the dragon meeting after? Unfortunately, Elia has uh, not disclosed that information. It appears as if the dragons don't wish the council to know. So, unfortunately, she would be able to explain that question, and she is unwilling to do so in our presence. All right. The dragons have made it very clear that they wish to speak to the four of you and keep information as tightly knit as possible. They're very good at doing so, it appears. Well, does Elia have a way to send the dragons word? I would imagine so. What we're going to do so that the dragons... 
will expect us not swiftly, but as swiftly as we can. I, I would imagine because so. I I think that the best course of option is to have Elia ask the dragons and say, "Hey, can they have a second? They got to take care of this thing, and then they're coming straight to you." Yeah, I mean, lives are at risk. Well, I I figure that's the best of decision. I can't leave other elves to die out there. I know. No, can I? I know the behaviors of certain dragons. I imagine that some would be. They would admire that sentiment. I imagine others might not necessarily care. But would those ones appreciate a party gift? I beg your pardon. Um, like, uh, a sorry I'm late. Here you go. <sighs> Good sort right. of. Dragons are prideful creatures. I, I, that is why I'm sure you've noticed amongst the dragons that you've slain, despite, uh, other than maybe the one that you uh, encountered uh, at the tavern, they tend to accumulate a massive amount of wealth, a hoard of it, if you will. Um, they like to add to that, the collectors. Exactly. So I'd imagine, what, do I know what would please an ancient dragon? No. But would Elia? Devotion. Mm -hmm. She might not disclose that information to us. To like, see, she looks no, uh, around. <laughs> it kind of gives you like a... Darn it, Elia. We need her to be the home girl. Yes, you um, um, I told you I'm not going to that meeting first. You said doing what? I think we should go to the meeting. The dragon meeting? I, I refuse. You're asking me to let other elves die. But there's, you gotta think ahead, there's more potential death. No, well, I'm going to value a human life. The, the dragons will fight regardless of whether we're next to them or not. They said it themselves. They're hesitant. Let them be hesitant. But why take a risk on whether we might get allies or not well, and let our people die because of it? That's terrible. Does the party have a moment to discuss its decision before we need to make it? Yes, when yeah. you mean you're free yeah. to make yeah. your plan yeah. as you so see fit. We're okay. I understand that, again, this is a, this is a moral quandary you found yourself in. Um, the sentiments I understand completely. If you have any questions or wish to speak to any of the delegates or ask us, again, our personal opinion, you may. Just know that they will vary from person to person. Yeah. Some might think more like Lux and wish that going to the dragons would be the wisest decision. Good defense is a good offense in some in some minds, whereas the sentiment that is displayed by our boars would be emulated and reciprocated by others amongst the council as well. Do you believe a the defense is a defense? Do you, do you believe a silver dragon is going to come protect a human, or come help a, come, come talk to a human about possible war in the future, rather than save? A yo it's youngling's life? No, well, of course. I'm looking at it differently. If you're thinking like, I mean, they're getting attacked right now. Guys, guys, every, everyone's what, watching. What, what, everyone, what? Everyone's watching <laughs> when we go on break. <laughs> it's a fair point. Sure. I don't what we'll do, she looks over to kind of like one of the guards that stands at the side of the door. Oh, oh, I just oh. chucked my pen. Oh. Oh. Right, later. She looks oh, right, over right here. Looks over to one of the guards. Inform servants, sir, if you will, to bring refreshments, snacks, and simple desserts to the sort of the council while they convene. Allow them to at least be comfortable. Um, set out a room. Set out the study. We'll let you use the study. The chairs are comfy. A fireplace if you're cold. Thank nice you. area. It'll be nice and quiet. We'll leave you to it. Do you have any else that you need from us? None at all. You've done quite a lot. Okay. We're not out there actively slaying dragons, so <laughs> we can't. Um, we can't even begin to say that we appreciate the work you're putting in. Now, there are still members of the delegation that are considering how much support they can add to this cause as is fair. Remember, they are here to represent their parties, their people, not our collective interests. Continue to do the work that you've done. I've heard a lot of good things, and I've seen, I've, you know, seen some positive reactions. Continue along that path so that you might sway the rest of the to be supportive of you. Lives depend on it. 
Okay, this meeting is officially adjourned. We will meet when they return from both of these escapades. Awesome. All right. Very well. The court begins to filter out. You guys make your way to the study. Um, and that's where we'll go ahead and take a break. All right. All right. Cool. We will be right on back then. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Know.
and see. We're back. We're yeah, live. Let me double check. We got audio. We're good. All right. Heck we're yeah. back. Thank you guys for waiting patiently. We went on a small break there. Um, you guys, the party, have been brought into the study. Um, food has been brought to you so that you had stuff to eat. Uh, refreshments of a mixture of different juices, wines, and uh, obviously water has been brought to you as giving you a wide range of things to drink. Um, you guys may discuss. <coughs> the seriousness of the plans that lay before you are very evident. Lux, I understand your concern for losing. Right as the door closes. Lux! <laughs> Lux, I understand your concern. <laughs> For losing a Fucked potential, notes, for potential, for a potential ally on, with the us. metallic dragons, but this is how I look at it. Regardless of whether they are direct ally or not, they they chose they're choosing to fight against them, and this you know Tiamat being summoned is is a direct, that directly bad thing for everyone, but especially them as well. So <coughs> it's not like if we lose them as an ally. We're going to lose them in the fight. We won't. Um, still, I think the... M I still think it's it's honorable and dragons can recognize that honor. Maybe not all of them, but I still think that we will have some on our side with the fact that we chose um, not to give away our lives for something that, you know, we, we might... Not giving away the lives of, of innocent people that don't deserve to die just for a potential ally. It, it seems kind of inhumane and, and a little, um, it, like, uh, we're not valuing the life there. I mean, I mean, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm choosing to die for these people, so why would I go and do something directly that I know will stop me from being able to save these lives right here? I mean, I'm confident in my ability with these dragons or not. I, I say that because the dragons asked to see the four of us specifically, that they should see us for who we are. And I think that as a party, we would go to help those in need before we go to those who wait in council. I think we're looking at the smaller picture. We need to back up. And I, I will say initially I was of that opinion. I thought that... I, I, I Ultimately, I think that the dragons are a stronger ally. And it's going to be more beneficial to have them on our side than it is to immediately address the green dragon problem. Um, but again, I've, I've come to the conclusion that I think that while the ones who will be upset with us for taking our time... I think that they that is a, a lesser infringement than on the ones who will look at us poorly for not helping our friends in their time of need. Or our allies, I guess I should say. Lux, if I had the opportunity to make a new ally, or save your life, I would choose to save you, and I hope you would choose the same for me. And that's how I feel about these elves. They are my brothers. Well, I, I think that we need to still respect his point of view. There's a, there's a bigger I, picture here. I understand, I get you, but we can't... What, what is the bigger picture? Well, it's not just about one person. We've become part of something no, bigger I, than ourselves. No, no, no. I, I, huh? What did you say? You guys have Nothing! Said. He hasn't what said did, anything! What did you say? He you was guess. trying to talk oh, it. Sorry. Sorry, say? sorry, trying, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to... Let's, uh, sorry. No, 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 keep funny. bantering. You're on the same point of view. Please let me... Uh -huh. inside my... I think it is the most horrible decision to go save those elves, but it's a, a minute, as wrong as it sounds, their lives. It's... We need to back up and take more defense and get ally with these dragons, because fighting fire with fire is what we're going to need, is <coughs> dragons with dragons. Lux, I understand... You don't think the compromise but of appeasement would help? I'd say if we're going to help those people, we're wasting more resources and we might not get allies with those dragons and then it's going to happen again and we'll have less resources Lux. to fight those cities with dragons that we have not much to fight with. Lux. It takes everything out of us to fight those dragons. Lux. <coughs> I, I, I understand that you've seen quite a bit and your family has done quite a lot. And that might make the value of life seem minute to you. 
but the the value of life is is very very strong to me and <clears throat> regardless of racial ties <clears throat> this is th 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 there's no way like uh, you were making me go something morally against my like uh, I, I this is this is so the bigger picture is that we're losing the potential ally what but but that's not also a guaranteed let's say that let's also say we're losing an ally with the men, the the leader of the men that are going out there and fighting, they're not, they want us to go out there, and, and if we choose to give up those lives, we're going to lose the allies in the council. So we're not, we're picking and choosing here, and I truly believe that you should add more value to the life of those men, regardless of, 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 of us getting uh, the dragon, dragons allied. They have families, they have, you know, Maybe we can save the two parents that a son like you, you know, you, where are your parents right now? And, and we could save two parents out there and have them go back to their kids so that their kids don't become deranged like your brother. You know, th this is deeper than that. It's, 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 um... Can I ask you a question, of course? Sure. If you had the opportunity to lay your life down knowing it would stop the rise of Tiamat, would you do it? Of course. But I think every single one of your elven brothers out in the Misty Forest would say the same thing if asked that question. Sure. And I think what Lux is trying to say is that the conversation that we can have with the dragons and the possibilities <coughs> and opportunities that that can lead to is going to make sure that those sacrifices to stop Tiamat are not in vain. I, I, I would say that, well, first of all, do you guys not have any opinion of the sort that these dragons are going to fight Tiamat regardless of our help? They're going against... They're going to... They will. So, so, so regardless of whether we're allies, you don't think that they're going to have... I uh, think that they will have a regard for our allied forces as opposed to if they have no care for the random foot shaver <coughs> as we try to assist them. You know, be it be as it might that we have the same end objective. I... I, I and, and furthermore... That you know, I, I'm not sure. What, I, are you? I'm not sure what your concern is. Is that we're not going to win the fight if they're not allied with us? Because I, I mean, I, I truly believe I, that we we can. I, I believe we will win the fight, but that's not how I'm looking at it. It's more of like we should, because there's all, already going to be well, death and loss. You guys are saying that this is more valuable than this, but uh, you're not. You're just saying that. I want to know why is this? Why? Why is getting this ally mo with a lot of maybes? Why? Why is a lot of maybes of getting these dragons a potential ally that maybe will get them allied if we go there on time? But we maybe will still get them if we don't go there a little bit on time. They, they said it themselves that they some of the dragons out there will respect that we chose to save these lives out here. They're not all selfish individuals. You see Hakon kind of stiffens up, and he, he just kind of looks at you and goes, well, I trust Daemon. The conversation will be quick, and I, I don't think that this uh, Aaliyah lady wants to waste any time either, and nor are these dragons. They're not... I mean, maybe a couple of them may want to talk, but I think most of them just... Uh, they just want to meet us. They're very prideful, and I feel like if we responded too late, it would be a waste. Of well, chance to ally with them. Hmm. if they're prideful, do you think that they want us to lower them to their standards, or do you think we should be respected as equals? I I don't think that. We should speculate, given the... Well, isn't that what we're doing? Going there, then that's that that whole decision is a speculation. Well, just merely that that point of speculation is it might warp our our pretenses going into the discussion. All I'm saying is the whole thing on that side is a is a is a is a speculation, and I know that we can go there and save some lives. But the spec the, the longer that it waits, the larger that that speculation then grows as well. Which I just don't. Troubling factor. I don't see why your your opinions are so strong on on the side with the dragons. I don't see what you guys truly like. Like the, the, there's so many maybes and no guarantees and not anything close to like a oh this will probably happen. We don't know. 
I don't see. I don't. I, it's hard for me to see that side of of you guys just don't value the life of of our soldiers out there. And just because they're willing to die doesn't mean we should let them die if we don't have the chance. That doesn't that doesn't make it any better. That just means we had the opportunity to save them, and we made one decision to make sure that their families didn't it's, have any fathers. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, when was it the is. last time a mortal offered the opportunity to sit council at a meeting of five ancient metallic dragons? It doesn't matter to me. That they were throwing away lives. The dragons are going to live regardless, and we have the direct. Op the, the, I, 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 I don't believe that we need them as an ally in order to win this fight, and I also believe that there's a good chance we can still gain them as an ally if we go and save these other people first. That's what I believe, and that's why I'm stand strong on this opinion. I don't believe that making that decision is going to ruin some opportunities for us. I, th I believe it'll make it more difficult, but I believe that I'm making the right choice. Well, they do have support warriors there now. All we're doing is coming to help. Well, he asked us for help. He said that they're going to die, that they, they've they been fighting out there for quite a while. And I think they can hold on a little longer while we just ally, yeah, said, grab trust allies him. real quick and, and then go immediately there. You can think, but they Plus told we us. Have, we would have dragons that could fly us there. If. That's an if. It is an if, but... It's why, an if why, to why would metallic well, dragons... Well, no, they also said that there's teleportation portals to get straight to the Misty Forest, so right upon our return, we will be there in an instant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think you guys are switching your opinions. Plus, I don't... as he said, the dragon has reduced the frequency of its attacks since they've increased the patrols. So we may have a day or two to get this conversation done and over with. If if that, we might not even need that much time given the teleportation portals and depending on how far away it is. I, I, I believe this And again, I know that that's people. another maybe, but yeah. this is a big this is a big yeah. opportunity and it's got a lot of risk, but it's got a big chance for a it, lot of reward. It, it, it's risk, but it's also, it's not, it's not just like, you're not believing in the people. It's not like a maybe if these people are going to... There's people out there that are going to die if we don't go out there and help. And and if we can clear out that chunk of the forest, it'll make it a lot easier for them to defend, and we might even be able to spread our forces somewhere else. It's... it's it's. Well, I believe we probably should come down to a vote. All right. I'm going to uh, grab my hat from my set of green winter clothing. I'm going to rip off a piece of chunk, a chunk of paper, uh, and I'm going to hand it to everyone. If you all could please write, if you would like to if write green dragon, if you'd like to fight the green dragons, and write council, or sorry, COD. If you'd like to go to the Council of Dragons. Well, I was thinking more of a straightforward, like, I mean, my vote's obvious, the Council. Alright, well, if you'd like to be direct, then my vote is to fight the Green Dragons and save some of the people out there. My vote is the Council as well. I will say, while well, I agree with you, I personally have the same conviction as a Boris. <laughs> And so I have to vote with a Boris. Then we split I think up. that the deciding factor should be Vidanya. She's as much a party as any of us are. And while she won't be accompanying us, I think that she might have a different perspective on the matter than all of us do. She might be too injured to speak. <clears throat> this is true. And if, if that's the case, then, then a Boris, I do think that we should go to the dragons. But we're already wasting time, so... Does, I, I think we should just send one person to Vidanya if um, you take, if you want to visit her. Well, Vidanya is the the person that's supposed to be watching over me. Exactly, that's why I'm saying she's as much of this party as But I'm, of us I'm saying, so I, 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 think, I think that I should go. You can, you can. If it's alright well, with everyone. 
You have a very biased opinion on the Green Dragons. My charisma is a ten. It's okay. It's okay. You guys are you guys are gonna read me like a book if I come down here trying to lie. <laughs> Alrighty. Arboris is gonna go visit Vidania. Trust me, I have a plus zero, okay. dude. I have to roll a nat 20 for you guys to not Vidania, beat me. Though. Okay, so what's so we're visiting the Yeah. Okay. So you, you find the she's kind of infirmed right now, so it's uh kind of like a small bed that she's laying on. She's attended to by a few priests of uh, local. Could I have brought some food up here? Sure. Like it, maybe some I don't know like something just like nice and warm. Sure. Mashed potatoes, dude. <laughs> Yeah, like some, well, it was like what? desserts that were gifted. So yeah, you bring some of the sweets over, um, and with you, and she's laying in bed. She looks to be doing a lot better. Um, she's been more thoroughly bandaged, so the bandage that you, you guys had applied to her has been removed, and she's more thoroughly cleaned up. Um, and she's kind of as as you as you enter, and, and the priest kind of lets you in, in slowly, just to make sure that you're not like overstressing her while she's recovering. And she kind of struggles a bit while she kind of tries to sit up in, in the bed that they put her in. She's Hello? Um, was not. She has a book that she's got like the thumb in. She goes ahead and uh, talks a. puts that off to the side. I wasn't prepared to uh, discuss with any of you all today. I thought you'd still be talking amongst the council. Um, we are. That is concluded, I, I imagine? Well, we're actually just it's, taking it's a. Over. No, it's over. A, it's over. Oh, it's over. Um, yes. Uh, okay. But, That's um. Good. Us, me, the rest. Me and the rest of the, the party. We're discussing something. Our next um course of action, really. Okay. Um. We seem to be at a crossroads. Right. So. Okay. Can I? Um. I'm sorry. While he's there, I want to cast my uh my what's it called? The spell that lets me put the invisible thing that watches or that can see or hear. And I want to cast the sight on the boars. Sight. Well, don't you have to be? Or I'm sorry, the hearing. You huh? have to be there? No, I just have to be familiar with... Like, if I'm familiar with the Boris, I can put it on him. I'm Does it say sure. the person? I saved you, Nico. Now, now you can bed. listen to it. Let me go back <laughs> and then there's Didn't you cast so it on Talos? Right? Uh, oh, yeah, no. So I can't put... I can put it in a place familiar to me or an uh, obvious yeah. location that's not familiar to yeah, me. Yeah, this would be not familiar. Darn it. A very specific room. Darn it. Yeah, sorry, man. Doesn't work, dude. That's a good thought, though. I tried, dude. I tried. Uh, she's listening. And then, <clears throat> well, we we seem to be at a bit of a crossroads. Um, right. Some very important, powerful people. Well, dragons actually. It's it's the metallic the or the or the like ancient metallic dragons. The order the five metallic ancient dragons have requested the four of us. Um, head to the council for whatever reason they will not disclose um, and the other decision we have is there, there's some men fighting out in the Misty Forest, Misty Forest I believe and uh, they're having some trouble with green dragons out there and I don't believe it's right to put here, I'll let me put their opinion first before I try and insert my own. Um, the dragons, I mean, no one, when is the last time they have requested someone to visit, humans to visit their council or, or whatever halves we are? And, you know, uh, they're quite prideful creatures, so we might really lose the opportunity to, you know, ally with them if we make that decision. Uh, and and they're they're very very you know very powerful and could easily turn the tides for us if we had them properly as our ally. Uh, furthermore, I believe it's it's um immoral and uh, not a very good value of human life if we choose to not clear out the forest of these overpopulated green drakes. To be fair, it sounds like you're talking about the value of elven life. Well, I, sure, elven life. It might push it a little bit, but I believe that I would do that for any race. At least any race with good intent. Sorry, I was just saying, you 
specifically, like circumstantially. You're elf, about, elf, right? sorry, oh, sorry. I missed you. A little confused for a second. I apologize. I think you bring up an interesting moral quandary. Um, I can't tell you what to decide. Uh, if you're asking me for my opinion, I can surely offer it. So. It, we, we love that. It appears as if your dissenters have come up with a realistic look on it. Um, you're not talking about normal dragons. You're not talking about the dragons that you faced, even. You have not seen an ancient dragon. The might of an ancient dragon would be the equivalent of our individual comprehension of a god in terms of strength and power and authority. Having five of them in unison and tandem with each other is one thing. Having them as a direction of all the remaining metallic dragons is entirely a thing of its own. So that brings up a good point. Not having their allyship, they won't care for the collateral damage. The goal will be to remove their ancestral enemy. As far as I know, mythologically speaking, and I know very little about different religions, but I know at least in the concept of, of the pantheon of Faerun, um, Tiamat has an opposite. Uh, Bahamut, the platinum dragon, the king of the dragons. And so she is the queen of the chromatic, he is the king of the metallic, and this is a feud that will fuel them. It might make their efforts more propulsive to ally with them, to know that they're here to protect mortal realm. I think that might shift them to be maybe what the gods had originally designed as some mythology behind the creation of dragons might even say that they were created by the gods as protectors. And you might be just calling them back to that divine origin and that greater calling that they have that, let's be honest, for centuries they have not needed to fulfill. On the, on the flip side, war is a terrible thing. People die, and people will die. The desire to not needlessly waste that life should be at the heart of every general that leads and sends people to war. For example, Older Ravengar. I know very little of his exploits, I know very little of his accomplishments. I do know that the Flaming Fist mercenary cares about its own people, and it cares about not losing its own people. And while and that's just even on the ground. That's, that's boots on the ground. I believe Older Raven God has made decisions that has signed off on the death of sons, fathers, brothers, cousins, uncles, even. I'm sure he's had to. As a general, you have to make those choices. People will die and it will be at your hand. It will be at your call, at the very least. And yet, I know that they have a culture amongst themselves of a camaraderie where their goal is to prevent the soldier standing to their left or right from dying needlessly, just in the moment. And yet, that doesn't provide animosity between the two. The Flaming Fist will diligently and reputably obey Raven God's directions. They know that he has a grander vision and he's good at minimizing his losses. But that doesn't change the fact that he has sent people to their death. That's an element of war to remember. And if you have sent people to death, and it is in vain, that's on you. And you have to live with that. You have to live with the reminder that the decision you made has cost families and got you little in return. Now, I know the elven people. I know you know little, having not spent any time with them. And that's no fault of your own. Just an observation. But I know the elven people. There's a, a parallel between the elves and the dwarves. Both prideful, I would say, stubborn greed amongst the dwarves. A little bit more of bombastic arrogance. And more of an aesthetic um, selfishness amongst the elves, I would say, from maybe our dwarven counterparts. However... Elves care deeply about elves. Elven culture, elven art, elven music, elven heritage, elven mythology, elven history, elvish lands. <clears throat> I spoke with uh, Daylon 
and Prince Alagothis has rallied the Misty Forest Elves, the Wood Elves, remind you're right, the Wood Elves of the Misty Forest, and the Elves of the High Forest, together. The Elves are working in tandem. This is a threat that threatens Elvish land. They go at it with that level of intensity. They are not looking to get slaughtered by dragons. They will fight and they will die if you leave them. They will. It will happen. They won't be extinct. But they will die. If you're willing to sacrifice them, that's up to you. If you want my personal opinion, after analyzing both of those, me personally, I believe that the sacrifice would be worth it. Because, in my opinion, it's a small price, and not an insignificant it's just a small price in comparison to what would happen if Tiamat is released and no one's there to stop them. Because then the whole world is over. So I believe that it is a very tough decision to live with. And that's why I mentioned Older Raven God has sent people to death. That's a hard decision to make. But I believe that's a necessary one. Now, if you were to talk to Dulan, he would say the exact opposite. I think he would think more like you and say that, no, life is not to be implicitly cast out. It upsets the balance of things. Like I said, you've lost elven culture. You've lost heritage. You've lost families. You can't get that back. Unless the elves started to enjoy sensual hedonism. That was a joke. Well, uh... Your word is, is um, quite insightful. Um, I, I, I fully realize I can't even comprehend the strength of an ancient dragon. Uh, so I'm sure it would be quite beneficial. It's just, it's really hard for me to, to put my heart into something knowing I'm letting others die. Let me put it this way. Dragons are prideful creatures. They are. All of them. But metallic dragons are good they can be benevolent they can be corrupted, don't get me wrong they're not infallible they can be benevolent they can be virtuous they can be they can have integrity if your desire to save elven life does not direct the group in that direction I would implore you to carry that level of passion to the dragons and let them know what it is costing you to be there. Bring the war to them. Because if we are to ally, they have to understand, again, a divine calling, if you would, that they are failing in that regard. I wouldn't say it that way, that would piss them off. But to challenge them to do what the gods have quote unquote designed them for. And if every second is paid with an elven life, then every second counts. That is not immoral. That is an admirable thing to do. And if the elves know that you're that you are away, if if Delon tells Alagathis that you are gaining the strength of dragons to fight dragons do it successfully tell me that the elves that are standing alive would complain they won't see it as a loss they won't see it as a failure who they, knows they what they'll mourn. see they will mourn, they will grieve but they will value what you have brought to the table there will be a few, don't get me wrong there will be a few that will be like, ah, it wasn't worth it I get that like I know the elven people, and I know King Melindrock slightly. These people are proud. And they are proud to die for elven, for the elven culture. They are proud to live for it. If you fail in allowing the dragons, you might as well not even show up to the Misty Forest, is how they will see it. So if you go, you better convince those dragons. They also carry a lot of ancestral grudges, if you would. Like I said, they're prideful creatures. They can hold a grudge, and they can hold it for a long time. Be mindful to 
not because of their stature, because of their status. When you discuss with them, whether it's before or after you go to the Misty Forest, I would I would advise you to be cautious about making needless concessions to appease them. Don't win their allyship at the degradation of the pride of other races. They have troubles with the elves, they have troubles with the dwarves. They might have troubles with other types of races, tieflings, those maybe those that are deceitful or, or subtle. You th- you they might think have their own standpoints and beliefs. You think I'll be people. rude about the dwarves to the... What I'm saying is, if one of those dragons has had issues with the dwarves, he will or she will carry that grudge and oh. will tell you of that grudge at the meeting. Of course. What I urge you to do is to be mindful of just making needless concessions on behalf of the dwarves. Oh. Who will be expected to carry out the concession you've made I in see. order to appease these dragons. Because when you go to these if when you go to this meeting to remind you of the urgency that I can see, you don't represent yourself. You don't represent the Council of Waterdeep. You represent the world. If you make a deal on behalf of the dwarves. The dwarves will be expected to carry it out. Otherwise, why are the dragons defending them? Dwarves sure. are prideful, and they are also grudge holders. Don't make an enemy in order to make a friend. All right, thank you, Vidanya. Um, hopefully, you enjoy some of the sweets I left here for you. I will. I haven't had sweets, and I need the sugars. Have a good um, night. You as well. I hope I was able to assist. I'm sorry. It sounds as if I disagreed with you, and that's understandable. But had you not talked to me, maybe you wouldn't have heard the things that the fates had divined for you to have heard. Or, or maybe by a, a struck of fate, you just chose the wrong person. Who knows? Who knows? All right. I can see into the future, but I can't. I can't interpret it. So, um, I'm starting to develop a headache, so I'm going to rest. Um, Eat more of those sweets, they'll help. I hope to be recovered by the time you return. And thank you for your help. Um, and one, one last thing. Sure. I told your father about meeting you. I also told him that Carrick, a Thronus, is active. Your father is very interested to meet you. So after we deal with the elves, after we deal with the dragons, we will take a trip to your homeland, and you will get to meet your family. So, don't die, was what I was trying to get to. Please don't. Well, I don't plan on it. Good. Alright. Thank you, Vidanya. You're welcome. And then I'll rush down. <laughs> Not instantly, but just, you know. Okay. So, uh, the next plan of action to still be thoroughly determined. The party sits in delegation for quite some time, the remainder of the night. To make this simple, let's just go ahead and kind of put this up to a vote. Do we as a group believe that this vote needs to be unanimous? Or does it need to be a majority rule? As to what, where the party goes? It's a, it's a serious thing that you guys are kind of tossing up, and, and that's become very apparent. Either the great, you know, which one you believe to be for the greater good. So do we believe that because of that it should be a unanimous decision, or do we believe it should be a majority rule? Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about regarding all of it? Well, before we get there, that's why I just want to know. Because if it needs to be unanimous, then yes, I feel like you guys should probably talk about it. I feel like it should be unanimous, because otherwise it's going to be... Why? Why can't it be? We're a party, dude. Because I want to go to council. Because <laughs> I think it is the greater good. Me too. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna like be the brick in the wall. I, 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 I think it probably. I mean, you guys don't make me feel good about it. Well, yours is the most good guy choice, but I think the one we're choosing is the harder one. Yeah, so you want you want me to think about this in context of alignment? This is the lawful good decision. This is the chaotic good decision. 
Mm-hmm. Mine? Yeah. Because you're 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 you are trying to bring it down to the 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 smallest point of the picture of the individual life, mm-hmm. and you are you are emphasizing the significance of that. They're pulling that frame way back and looking at the bigger picture and emphasizing the importance of that. Right. So the lawful good approach would look at it from that direction. We have, we're thinking about the world, the world at stake. You know, a few, like I mentioned well, before, maybe, I, maybe a few thousand elves or a few hundred elves might be worth a small price to pay. As unfortunate as it is to save, whereas on the flip side, a chaotic good would be like, yeah, I don't think so. I believe that we could still win without the dragons. So I don't feel like I'm putting the hands at. Like I don't believe this is like the war-winning decision. I believe this is a big decision, but it's just hard for me to, like. Um, I mean, we're at the point where we're gonna have to fight for God, so I want the most help that we can possibly get. Because those elves, they're not gonna fucking help us. Give me a ring of protection, and I am God. You have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have Tiamat's stat block in here, and let me. Uh... You want to guess what we are looking at for an attack bonus? Plus 14. Plus 14, that's what we think? Yeah. No, it's just like plus 29. Right, pull up the nah. stat block. Oh, shit. Plus 14. Where is it? Plus 9. T and You said a plus 14? Yeah. You're wrong. Plus 20? Plus 9. You're close. Higher or lower? I won't tell you that. I won't let you get to the specifics, but you're close. 18. Dude, the fact that plus 20 is close. I told you it was plus 25, bro. Yeah. It's not plus 25. Dude, it doesn't matter. Plus 20 is my fucking AC. It's past my AC. Alright, so we'll go to the council. Okay. That's the plan we'll do? Yeah. Alright. The party has made a decision. And the elves will have to hold out. Your trust in them to do so. So that you can secure an alliance that has never before been seen before in the realms of men. You will meet five of the most powerful creatures that exist in the material plane. Will I get to hug them? <laughs> if you're nice. I don't know if they will like that, but that is where hey, we hey, pick up the bronze one will. at the council. <laughs> well, the bronze one will like to talk a lot. But that is where we'll pick up next se- uh, next session as you guys talk with um, Elia in order to depart to meet the dragons. What kind of food do they like? Fish? Elia's a maiden. Um, cows? Other dragons? I don't... You know, that's a good question. Wait, how do ancient dragons even have to eat? Is. How big are <laughs> ancient dragons? Uh, col- they're, I think they're considered colossal. As big as your mom. Thing. Yeah, they're, I think they're considered colossal in stature. So let me, let me look at Tiamat, for example, and see what her stat is. Is oh, because they're uh, no, she's gargantuan, so they're they're considered gargantuan. They're like this big. So, can you uh, show let, them? Let, like me, let me put it. No, no, no. So that's an adult dragon. How big is gargantuan? So technically, the Tiamat miniature is was made earlier than this dragon miniature, so that's why they're the same size. Classification wise, they wouldn't be. Tiamat should be like fifteen times bigger, and that's like a, just a, a, a really rough estimate. Um, huge, bro. There are miniatures of ancient dragons. She, she's they're this like big, five times as big from as the horse. table. Please. Yeah, horse? they're massive. Can you can you kill an ancient dragon? Yeah, it's possible. Do you have to get a little tiny? No, 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 no. Um, I know, like, Critical Role, for example, that's extreme. They fought a series of ancient dragons at, like, level 15. How many ancient dragons? Are there more than just, like, these five? Compared to, like... Potentially. I wouldn't... I don't know in the scope of the world. I imagine there could be, but maybe they're just not in favor. So the the problem is... like a hundred of these, dude. I'm not trying to see if I can devote myself to one of them. Oh, fuck off. You, you dragon. Depends on which dragon likes you. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick up there next week. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching us for the night. We're going to um, talk to dragons. Have a good rest of your, uh, you know, week. Have a safe week. Have a fun week. And we'll see you guys next Monday. Take Thank care. You.